good YouTube Quinn Wade coming to y'all with that basketball analysis on analysis player on dot com and on YouTube. We're gonna talk about the top five and the honorable mention shooting guards in the NBA. Sometimes it can be a little confusing because some point guards play the shooting guard position, certain guards play that position, you know, which is the point guard position. And it could be a little confusing to the fans. What's a point guard? What's a shooting guard? I look at what do you start at? What do you put the most minutes at? And that's the way I look at it. And, you know, it, it can be a little difficult to pick this list because you never really know who's who and what what and what's what. But at number six, I got Desmond Bain. He's a guy that slowly been coming to becoming one of the best players in the league in general, not just the best shooting guards. And he can really score the basketball, became a 20-point scorer right away. People thought he would be a solid player, maybe even a starter, but he quickly rose to fame in Memphis by being a guy that can give you 20 points every single game. And I feel like that's something that you can't really teach right away. It's either they can do it or they can't. But when you draft him that low and he produces himself into an all-star caliber player, it just shows you how great you know he has become. And I have done a breakdown showing you how easy and simplified and minimalistic his approach is to the game. Let me shoot some threes. Let me get to the basket. Let me get to the free throw line. And let me be efficient shooting those shots, whether I'm open or I'm just trying to facilitate a little bit because he is a decent passer slash pay playmaker. And he's very patient when he's making decisions. And he's never really sped up or rushed. And I feel like that's the making of a great player, which he already is. And I can see him making multiple all-star teams down the road. But as of right now, I have him as an honorable mention. Number five, I got Zach Levine. I feel like he's a really, really good player when it comes to having a full bag of moves. He can handle the ball. He can get to the rim. He can dunk it. He can shoot free throws. He can score off the dribble with mid-ranges. He can pull up right in your face with threes. It's nothing offensively Zach Levine can't do, and that's why I have him at number five, just because he has a higher ceiling than a Desmond Bain because of his athleticism, and he also showed that he can be efficient from three and mid-range and from the free throw line and finishing and just becoming one of the – offensive juggernauts this guy is so long and so quick and so fast it's hard to stay in front of him and he uses his athleticism to the maximum whether it's either shooting over a view or even getting right to the basket or getting out in transition it's like a blur paying attention to Zach Levine how quick he can abuse you and get past you and do damage to you as a defender and I feel like that's why we still look at him as one of the elites and people are gonna say well there's not that much trade for him when it comes to the market, it's not too many people trying to go after him. That's contract based. Can you get rid of enough without losing too much so you can still be a competitive team? It made sense because that's how he ended up in Chicago. Minnesota had a suitor and it was Chicago and they became a playoff team with Zach Levine, Zach Levine as their best guy or one of their best guys showing you that they can win the game. They can get to the playoffs, but is that their ceiling? Well, it depends on what you have around him and what he has to work with. But as of right now, he has still been one of the best individual shooting guards in the game. Team, sport-wise, his teams haven't played very well, but individually he has. And that's all I got to do, all I got to say about Zach Levine. Um, number four, Donovan Mitchell. Um, he has been one of the best scorers in the league the last five years. The guy is absolutely an onslaught offensively. He can rein in threes. He can get to the basket with ease. He can hit the floater. Um, he can pull up mid-range off the dribble, off the screens. He can hit the free throws at an 80, 80 to 90 almost clip. And this guy has the handles to get wherever he wants to on the court. And he has the ability to have the high alert when it comes to knowing when to get rid of the ball or knowing how to, you know, split the defense of where he can still get his advantage. Even if they're trying to send a double team or trap, he's just so decisive and so quick with his decision making. It really has made Donovan Mitchell one of the toughest players in the league to cover. And that's what you want to see if you're 
a team like Cleveland, and he has brought that to the table. This is the guy that you wanted to trade for. This is the guy you thought you was bringing in, and what you see is what you get. And I think that that's a great thing to see is that he's virtually tearing apart defenses, whether they're great or not. And that's how you get to the finals, and that's how you get to a championship. Yeah, you got to rest on your defense, and yeah, you have to play hard, and yeah, you have to play consistent, and yeah, you have to – play dominant basketball, but your superstars got to be superstars. And that's one thing we can't complain about Donovan Mitchell. He shows up, he plays, and he goes hard offensively. Now, he might be a little undersized for the shooting guard position. He might be a little bit bad defensively, and he might, you know, get a little bit gassed sometimes because he can score in, in spurts and in bunches sometimes. But other than that, there's nothing you can really complain about when it comes to Donovan Mitchell because he does everything else. Not a great defender, not the greatest passer, but he can score like crazy and get really, really hot. And that's why he's on this list. Number three, Anthony Edwards. Um, some people always think he'd be higher. I think it's just because he's a shooting guard that's still ascending. He's still trying to become efficient. He's still trying to stay dominant. He's still learning what moves he should use and what he shouldn't use. He's still learning how to score in the mid-range. He's still trying to know when to attack and get all the way to the basket. He's still trying to figure out when to pull up for those threes. His efficiency has went up. His confidence has been going up because of the playoff success. He's going to be compared to some of the greatest and some of the best players in the league currently like he should be because he was the number one pick. A lot of us like what we seen out of what he could be and it was just imagination now it's reality the guy is averaging 25 points per game almost and he can really rebound he can really pass he can really do a lot of things on the court offensively and he has the body the length and the size to do it defensively even if he has to develop that in the future but he has the highest upside in that draft and he continues to show although he is playing at an all-star level can he get to that all nba level can he get to that superstar level? Right now, he's at the all-star level. Now it's time for him to take his chance with the Olympics, learning and playing a lot in the playoffs. Now it's time for him to you know, evolve his game to another step forward in dominance and become a 25 plus. Now it's time to get 27, 28, 30 points per game. Minnesota needs it. They have so many guys that had to take less money or couldn't afford to play on this team because of the contracts of Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. So somebody's going to have to take their game to another level, and it's going to be the guy that they drafted number one, which is supposed to be that guy that takes them you know, to a higher echelon of teams, and he's becoming a higher echelon of a player. Year by year, he has improved incrementally and now massively this year. He took a huge leap, and now we just need his offensive game and his defensive game to take an even bigger leap, and he just need to get in a little bit better shape so he can play on both ends of the court at maximum minutes that he can play. And I think that that will make him the best shooting guard in the league if he can do that, you know, within one or two seasons then there's no reason why he can't be the best. I see Anthony Edwards as a guy coming in the next three years as the best shooting guard if he can figure these things out, you know, early in his career because guys like Jalen Brown, who's number two, has already figured that out. Let me play hard defensively. Let me get to the basket. Let me knock down the mid-range. Let me knock down the three. Let me do that efficiently and still be able to score 25 points a game. And he has done that consistently for the last two years now I know he didn't make the all NBA team this year he was a little bit short uh, of that goal but he did become a finals MVP and an MVP for the Eastern Conference and I think that that means a lot because we knew Jalen Brown when he came in he was just a slasher slash cutter with the potential to be a mid-range and three-point shooter we knew he had it in him we knew he had to work at that we knew he had the mentality as a Celtics fan and he got that all to reality too but he has some competition if he wants to be the best because when you look at the number one player Devin Booker he is the complete package outside of the defense he can do this handling he can do the passing he can do the scoring he can get hot he can get catch fire he has the pull-up game he has the three-point game the free throw game the foul drawing game and there's nothing Devin Booker can't do besides be a great defender which you got Anthony Edwards and Jalen Brown is the only way he can be superseded is that they're two-way players. And the more they grow defensively and the more consistent they grow defensively, that's the only reason why I can see Devin Booker losing this spot that he has held on to even by the voters 
they look at Devin Booker as the best shooting guard, and I just can't blame them for that, you know. And I like that he was a cover of 2K because he doesn't make no excuses about his game. He doesn't make no excuses about his performances. He goes out there and does the best he does, I mean, the best he can do, and he actually leaves it all out on the court. Now, I understand that Drew Holiday locked him up a little bit in the NBA Finals. I understand that Luka ended up beating him pretty good um, in the playoffs, too, uh, a year ago when it was the number one seed in the NBA. And I knew they flopped a little bit last year getting swept by the Minnesota Timberwolves. So the playoffs hasn't really been going all the way in his favor, but he did get to the NBA Finals, and he was a big part of that, and, and so was Chris Paul. But that's the farthest they can really go when it comes to these players, and I like what I have seen out of Devin Booker, especially as a player, as a facilitator, as a scorer. Whatever role they want Devin Booker to play on the Suns, he has been able to adapt to it. He has been able to do it at the highest level, and that's something that, if anything, can be tough just to be an evolution of yourself or just being a smarter, cleaner version of yourself. And I feel like Devin Booker has become that. I don't think he can hold this title that long because of the Jalen Browns and the Anthony Edwards that's coming each and every season, getting better just like he did at one point. But at least he was able to become the best player in his you know, class. At least he was able to become the best player at his position. And at least he's become an all-NBA player for multiple seasons. And that's all you can ask your franchise player to do, attract other guys, give you the best chance of winning, and put you in a situation where you can possibly win a championship. And Devin Booker has done all those things already, and he's not even 30 years old. But he, he should be a top 100 player. Same with Jalen Brown, same with Anthony Edwards, same with Donovan Mitchell, and Zach Levine and Desmond Bain. We'll see how they continue to perform the next five to six years and how they up their game or change their game or add to their game. But after that, it is nothing really to say. It's still Devin Booker as of right now, but I can see that changing even within the year because it is really just that much, you know, talent in, in this position now. At one point, it wasn't a crazy amount. It was just five. Now it's more than five and we'll see, you know, how this continues to turn out over the years and who can still reign as the best shooting guard and can a shooting guard be the best player in the league again we haven't really seen that since kobe bryant and michael jordan those was the two that was the best shooting guards in the entire world aka the best player and they was able to get it done as finals mvps as mvps and they also played on both ends of the court so maybe it will be jalen brown maybe it will be anthony edwards because they already have that sign that they can do that and they can be that and they are more athletic so the ceiling is a little higher but when you're working with what you got and you're making the best of it it's devin booker and there's no doubt about that if anything that's facts and i will have to end the video like that devin booker jalen brown anthony edwards donovan mitchell zach levine and desmond bain Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, coming with that basketball analysis, signing out. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell. And if you have some free time, watch them older classics that I have on my channel. I have over 2,000 plus videos. So make sure you check those out too. And you're bound to find something that you like on this channel. If not, I have different type of styles that I do on this channel too that can really entertain you. Other than that, I'm gone.